Today, I want to talk about Son Goku and how consistent of a character he is. Or really, how inconsistent of a character he is. So, first of all, I want to clear something up. Is that Goku is not a good guy. Goku is not a good guy, not a good person. In fact, it was stated in the manga that the only reason Goku in the beginning of Dragon Ball did not eat turtle was because he didn't think he would taste good. So, yeah, that gives you an idea of the kind of character we're working with in this video. But Goku's character is pretty fine, just, just learning about the world and becoming more knowledgeable, and just developing into a character, and just developing his core, the core characteristics of the character, up until the Piccolo Daimao arc. With this, the Piccolo Daimao arc and the Red Ribbon Army arc are where we start to see the problem. Why don't we start off by talking about the ruthless killer that is Son Goku in the Red Ribbon Army arc. First of all, Goku kills hundreds of people that are. The amount of characters that were in plane that he would run through and cause them to explode. I mean, that people that guns he would like make cause to blow up. The amount of people Goku blew up and straight up murdered in that arc is ridiculous. But the worst of them all, in my opinion, would have to be General Black. Who this is probably the worst kill Goku had. Like, the bottom of the barrel, lowest thing Goku had ever done. General Black was terrified of Goku. He, in his mech suit, he was running away. He just did not want to die, and he was completely and utterly helpless to just defend himself against Son Goku. So, Son Goku response was to attack him. That's right. To run right through him. I'm explaining what happened for people who didn't watch Dragon Ball, by the way. Goku ran through General Black's mech suit, causing it ex to explode. Goku murdered this guy. However, earlier in the arc, he had also straight up murdered Tao Pai Pai and didn't feel bad about it. He kicked the grenade into Tao Pai Pai's face, and when Tao Pai Pai died, Goku was like, meh, whatever, who cares, not a big deal, this does not affect me at all. I killed the bad guy. Wood, yay! In fact, I think he started eating happily after murdering this man. Goku killed somebody. I think that was Goku's first ever kill, and he didn't feel any remorse for it. Goku felt no remorse for killing as a child, and as I stated earlier, he almost, he would have eaten turtle. A living being with human-like thought, with a brain and human-level intelligence. He would have killed it and eaten it, if he had thought it would taste good. Goku has absolutely no value for life. At all. He is an incredibly selfish person. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about Goku killing Bray in the Piccolo Daimao arc because he got angry. After Krillin was killed by Thimble, Goku decided he was going to kill Piccolo and all the minions and anybody who got in his way. He killed Piccolo's servant, Drum, Literally punched him in the head and knocked one of his eyes out. Almost, I think he, I'm not sure if he knocked his eye out or not, but I know his eye came out of his socket. He knocked one of his eyes out of Drum's socket, and he, no remorse. In fact, he acts like it's normal to knock people's eyes out of their socket. Doesn't feel the slightest bit bad about it. Then we got into a fight with King Piccolo, who I just want to talk about the fact that Goku went into the fight with King Piccolo with the intention of murdering him. Goku did not want to fight him for the fun of it, which is still incredibly selfish, by the way. But Goku wanted to murder King Piccolo. He wanted to kill him and re get revenge for Krillin. So, what did he do? He ran a hole through Piccolo's chest. Yeah, he flew up, punched him through the chest, and instead of, and, and instead of being like, Damn, I just, I just straight up murdered somebody for my own selfish revenge, Goku was like, I did it, I killed Piccolo, that means I'm super strong, right? Go no remorse, once again. Completely fine with the fact that he took a life. Innocent or not, whether, that, whether or not a life is innocent doesn't matter. You should not be like that after killing a, taking a life. Goku killed a man and felt fine with it. He didn't care at all. That's just leaps and bounds without Goku's character. However, why don't we skip to the, to the next arc? The arc where he fights Piccolo Jr. and he does probably the first time he's ever done this. He shows an act of kindness. Goku spared Piccolo Jr. However, why did he spare him, you may ask? Well, the reason is quite clear. This was an arc where Toriyama 
it really it could be awkward he really put in the idea that Goku needs a rival to drive him to get stronger. He needs a rival. He needs someone to fight. So Goku's thought process here was Piccolo's an opponent. I beat him once. I can beat him again. Is that stupid? Of course it's stupid. That's unbelievably stupid. But Goku did it. That's because Goku is a bastard. So Goku lets Piccolo live. Goku let Piccolo live. He's fine with that. Now, the reason it isn't because he wanted a rival. He wanted somebody to drive him to get stronger. So he let Piccolo live. Third time Goku has ever spared his opponent. That was the first time in the series he ever spared his opponent. Now we skip to the Raditz arc, where Raditz tells Goku to pile up 100 human bodies. Now, for a kid that had killed a lot of people, this shouldn't be a big deal, right? You would think. You would think after all the people he murdered, Goku would have no problem killing a couple hundred, killing 100 people if they had done, right? Well, Goku's response to Raditz's request was, and I quote, from the manga, I'm quoting this from the manga, you're insane, I die before I helped in you, slaughter innocent people. Okay, so those people in the Red Ribbon Army, who by the way, if you look back at that arc, we didn't really see them do anything that bad. A lot of those soldiers were pretty innocent. But those people, those people in the Red Ribbon Army, those people, were they not innocent? I guess, I guess those people, I guess, I guess all, I guess every single person you killed was pure evil. There was no chance of redeeming them. No, I don't believe that. There is no way every person in the Red Ribbon Army was pure evil to the core of their heart. Could never do anything good with their life. Goku has slaughtered, mul mul in it. Goku has slaughtered innocent people multiple times. In fact, this is the first time I've ever seen Goku apprehensive about killing somebody. Now, I understand these are innocent people, but he, he probably killed innocent people before, as I just explained. The people in the Red Ribbon Army, there were probably some innocent people there that he killed. So this is completely out of nowhere. This whole no-killing attitude, this whole apprehensive about taking innocent life, this is completely out of left field, and I don't know where it is coming from. But now, let's talk about a scene from the fight with Raditz that take place directly after the revelation that there are two Saiyans much just stronger than himself out there in the universe. So, Goku had just found out that there are two people stronger than Raditz, right? You would think he'd be excited. Piccolo even comments, Does it not thrill you, Son Goku, to know that there are two people out there, even stronger than him? Goku said, Thrilled probably isn't the word I pick. The, a better word would be, Terrified. So Goku's afraid of fighting Vegeta and Nappa. He's afraid of them. Yet later on, he shows that he decided to fight Vegeta. This is very inconsistent. This is out of actually nowhere. Like when is Goku afraid of fighting someone? Now, I would like to point out that this is the first time Goku can sense key. This is the first time that element of the story was introduced. This is the first time you're really seeing Goku show true fear. And that's understandable because this is the first time he has a real good grasp on who he's fighting, on how powerful they are. But it's still not consistent with the past thing, with past events that Goku had gone through. And Goku had never been afraid to fight a strong opponent before. Now, why don't we skip to where Goku lets Vegeta live and said this little comment. Which I will be paraphrasing, but I will have the manga panel up on screen. So what Goku pretty much said in this panel is that he'll probably come back and kill us. He'll probably come back to fight us again. But I want you to let him live. Goku knows Vegeta is not like Piccolo and probably thinks Vegeta had no chance at redemption. However, he is still 100% fine with letting Vegeta live. Why? Because he wants to, because he wants to fight him as a rival. He wants somebody that he can aim toward. Aim to defeat and get stronger and surpass. And somebody that will push him to keep training so we can have a goal. Because there is always somebody stronger. But this is the only person Goku knows that is stronger than him. So, he wants to keep Vegeta around for his own selfish reason. Now, let's talk about the Namek arc. And specifically, his fight with Frieza. Because God, do I hate this fight. Don't get me wrong, it's a great fight and all, but there are some problems with it. Or, to be more accurate, Goku's character in the arc. Now, if you remember, the reason Goku was so hell-bent on killing King Piccolo was to get revenge for his best friend, Krillin, who was killed by Piccolo's servant, Symbol. Frieza, before Goku's eyes, murdered his best friend, Krillin. Same as that circumstance, causing him to transform into a Super Saiyan. Goku then proceeds to fight Frieza, 
and at the end announced he would board the fight and he would go into Left Free to live. Yeah, for some reason, Goku is once again showing that he did not want to kill somebody who was helpless and weak. Which would make sense if he had not murdered hundreds of people almost in Dragon Ball. Countless people. Countless. All those random Red Ribbon Army soldiers. Dead. General Black. Dead. Tao Pai Pai. Dead as far as he knew. Uh, King Piccolo. Dead. So many people. But yes, here he is in front of the man who murders his best friend. A man that honestly, honestly, God, should be killed. Deserves to die, to be honest. And Goku's like, no, I'm not gonna kill him. I'm like, this guy deserves to die more than Tao Pai Pai. That's undebatable. Yet Goku doesn't want to kill him. And when Goku does end up killing him, I'll, there's a great shot. Really nice shot. I'll probably put it up on screen of Goku's face. He just looks so unsatisfied and he feels so guilty. After he murdered King Piccolo, he was like, oh yeah, I killed King Piccolo. I'm the best. He killed Frieza. He's not satisfied. He looked kind of depressed, actually. Like, he's ready to cry. He looked really sad and depressed. And it's that that bothered me a lot. That that was just... That, as you can see, Goku is not a consistent character. But he would act one way in Dragon Ball, act one way in Z. But then he'll act, and there are other things that are inconsistent about a character, especially in Mistelor. Specifically, the 10-day gap between the... Training and the cell game. In fact, let's talk about that point in the theory. After he finishes his training with Gohan in the Hyperball Time Chamber, Goku decided it, decided it was a good idea to spend 10 days resting. Now, one thing that always been consistent with Goku is that he wanted to get stronger. He wanted to surpass his own limitations. But, but not here. Not here. At this point in the theory, Goku decided that he was okay with being weaker than his own child. He was okay with not training, just forgetting about the other enemy, forgetting about his goals, surpassing his own limit, and letting his own son take Cell out for him. And he was okay with just he was okay with being weaker than his son, which is not consistent with his character for the rest of the series at all. Then there was that that Goku also becomes incredibly stupid here. Honestly, I sometimes want to sit Toriyama down and ask him what was going through Goku's head. When he gave a sense to being the cell. What was going through his cell? He said, it was almost as if he was thinking something along the lines of this. Hey guys, I want to show off how cool my son is. I have a super strong son and I want you guys to see that he can kick cells ass even when cells at full power. So I'm going to give cells a sense to being. It was almost as if Goku was actually thinking that and that just blows my mind. That is probably the most obvious stupid decision Goku made in the cell arc, but it's not the most selfish one. No, no, no. He made a decision so incredibly selfish, some could argue this destroyed Goku's character and made him undeserving of the title of probably most popular main shonen character of all time. In fact, he may be the most popular, but characters like Naruto, Ichigo, and Luffy are much better shonen char main characters than he is. And that is a fact, because this is just so unbelievably selfish, it is actually hard to wrap your brain around that time. Bulma has this amazing idea to use the Dragon Ball to find out where Dr. Jiro is, or Dr. Gero is, go to him, and stop him from creating the android. But no, no, no! You wanna know what Goku gotta say about that? But Bulma, we need to fight the android! I wanna fight the android! No! We're not going after Dr. Jiro! Who cares if, if his androids were said, are said to be able to kill all of us and destroy the whole world? Who cares if they kill innocent people? I want to fight the android! It's like a freaking child! And it's just, it's so aggravating! Because it's just, you wonder what was going through Goku's head at this time. It was like, it was like his whole thought process was, Oh, my son could die? Ah, oh, who cares? I can fight, I need to fight androids. The androids are strong and that, and that will give me a boner. I mean, really, it was like, it was like that was going through. It, it's so unbelievable, this thing, because it doesn't make any sense. And it really is just unbelievable. But let's move on to some more things about Goku's character that are just inconsistent, Stupid, and then just the characterization of the character. I'm going to talk about it some more. So, the cell arc, as I just talked about, these are two instances 
all the instances I talked about are just, they're instances where Goku's character is kind of changed to fit the situation in the arc. It was like, almost like Toriyama would just, the main fight was coming up, this was never even alluded to, by the way, but the main fight was coming up, and he wanted Gohan to get the kill. He wanted Gohan to kill Cell, so it was like Goku could pass the torch to Gohan. And Goku just will no longer be interested in interpreting his own limitation. He won't want to win the fight. He won't want to get stronger. He'll lose his core element of his character just so Go Gohan can fight Cell. Now, this would be fine if it wasn't just so mind-bogglingly stupid to change the character for the setting of the story. But this is the, this is the part of the story where I feel like Toriyama... Just, he kind of, Goku's character just kind of starts falling apart. It kind of, it kind of, he starts becoming like a plot device and becoming whatever the story needs him to be. Like later on in the Boo arc, where he decides to let Goten and Trud fight Boo because he doesn't think Boo is fun enough. Like, he doesn't care. It's like, no, that's that for later on when I talk about the Boo arc. But it just, as you, as you can see, I, I'm trying to just explain that this is the point in the story where Goku's character mattered less than the story. The story matters more than the characterization of the main lead, and that is a problem. But let's move on to the Boo arc. But at the end of the Cell arc, Gohan is chosen to stay dead and let the other characters do the fighting and protect the world while he stayed around, while he stayed dead and fucked around the other world. Now, can we talk about Goku fight with Fat Boo for a moment? Goku could have defeated Fat Boo. He confirmed it. He outright said, Oh, I could have done it. I could have beaten Fat Boo. We have confirmation of this. We have proof. We got confirmation. We got it all, right? However, this is the interesting thing. You know what the interesting thing is? He didn't want to beat Fat Boo. Now, all that shit about the boy that it beat her, that, that's not. No. It was not worth his time. It's the same thing with Frieza. Goku was dominating Fat Boo. He could have easily beat Fat Boo. The fight wasn't worth Goku's time. Now, now, now there is some merit to what to the statement by Goku in the manga where, and the anime where he pretty much said, I am dead. You guys need to learn how to handle your own problem. That statement does have some merit. However, however, at the end of the arc, he murdered Kid Boo and gets the kill. Which is, which leads to a ton of problems with the arc, being as such as switching the main character and who will kill Boo multiple times. Originally, Goten was supposed to kill him, Trunks and Goten were supposed to fuse, and Goten could have killed him. But even then, I don't even think that was supposed to happen. It is pretty straightforward that Goku wanted, uh, Toriyama wanted Gohan to kill Boo. That is pretty obvious. Gohan could have killed Boo. But then Toriyama, no, he had to, he, he did all the stuff with Kid Buu, Vegito, all of this, just so Goku could get the kill, even though that completely, even though Goku fighting Buu at all, completely contradicts the, the statement he made at the beginning of the arc, where he stated he can't keep on saving them, he still ends up saving them, and it just makes you look at Goku's character and be like, but you just said this. It is so, and he is genuinely interested in saving it. He doesn't even show any sign of like being annoyed that they can't save themselves. He seems to be like, okay, I'll do it. And just, ah, uh, but let's just, let's continue. And it really comes down to the fact that Goku will for, oh, forever and always be the main character. Now, even when Toriyama will set up the stage for Goku to pass the torch, Goku will always be so selfish. That he always is going to end up coming back somehow and end up getting that kill. And that is something that it continued into Super, which is what I'm going to talk about now. It continued into the movies, into everything, into GT. But let's talk about the new canon stuff. Dragon Ball Super and Goku in that as well. So, in the Dragon Ball Z Battle of God, the movie version at least, Goku quits in his fight with Beer with... I am sorry, he gets this massive power from the God form. He did his Super Saiyan for him, and he's beating the shit out of Beerus. Now, he could have gone Super Saiyan 2 or Super Saiyan 3. He could have done that, but he didn't for unknown reasons. Really, nobody really knows why he didn't. Just Goku stupid, I guess. But you know, he goes, he attacks, he fights Beerus, he loses, and he gives up. He's just like, you're stronger than me, I can't win. That made me so mad. If he had gone Super Saiyan 3, he probably could have won that fight. 
I'm 90 percent sure if he had gone Super Saiyan 3, he could have won that fight pretty easily. But yeah, uh, but let's talk in the at least in the super version. Not to give super too much of shit. I'm about to give super a tremendous amount of shit. But at least in the super version, I'm gonna compliment super here, which I don't, which I really do. At least in the super version, when he was he was beat, like he was exhausted, he was unable to fight anymore. There was no getting up and continuing to fight. And this Goku could have kept fighting. He chose not to. He was not dead yet. In, in Super, he was done. In Battle of Gods, he could have done something earlier on. He could have held his own. He could have gone Super Saiyan 3 or Super Saiyan 2, right when he made the from the sky. He could have done something. He did it. In Super, at least, it was like my Super Saiyan is gone. I'm done. The fight is over. Alright, it was nice, good, good writing, and fair. But now, let's talk about Goku character arc in Dragon Ball Super. That he, had, that he had been through three times. He had repeated the same character arc two or three times at this point. Let's talk about it. The character arc is that Goku holds back too much. He holds back too much, therefore he ends up losing his fight in Battle of Resurrection of F. In Dragon Ball Z, Resurrection of F, or Resurrection of F Super Arc, we comment that he holds back in his fight too much and he is too carefree. Now, this is a really good character arc. But then Goku ends up holding back, getting a whole blasted through his freaking heart, losing, but Earth gets destroyed. Goku feels terrible about it, seemingly learns his lesson, right? He, he goes in, fires the Kamehameha, go back in time, save the Earth, kill Frieza, right? Simple as that, right? Then we go to Benet Dark, where throughout the entire tournament, Goku's holding back. And then next he learns nothing for the fight with Frieza. And the same thing happened where he ends up holding back and getting defeated by Frost. Either way, Frost cheated or not, he still lost the fight, and he could still would have won if he had gone all out. But the Goku ends up getting defeated by Frost, he's on the ground, and guess what happened? Take a guess. Then, in the final fight, he ends up going super all out against Hit, doing his super saying God Blue Kaioken technique. He goes into that form and starts beating the shit out of Hit. And I'm just like, what? Like, is, there, is this just a repeat? Like, you like, like you hold back, so you lose. So then you go all out and beat, and beat the main bad guy? Well, you even beat the main antagonist in the arc. In fact, you forfeit the match for reasons that I will not be going into here. But Goku forfeits the match in the tournament after going ridiculous uber-duber all out. And I'm just sitting there like... So, was there a point to it? Because it'd be that same character arc we just had in the previous arc. And that same thing. Exact, exact same character arc. Now, I do want to throw this in here because Super is not over it yet. Maybe in the next arc, Goku will learn his lesson. Maybe in this arc with Goku Black, he will learn his lesson and this can all go somewhere. Maybe. Probably not with our, with my luck, but maybe this will go somewhere. Most likely not. It'll probably go absolutely nowhere. But who knows, maybe we'll get lucky, right? But that is besides the point. Who knows, who knows, no, no, even better. He's going to learn his lesson, and he's going to forget it, and then learn it again, and rinse and repeat until Super ends. Maybe that will happen. That's probably what could happen. Now, the easiest thing to talk about is Dragon Ball GT, because Goku as a character is never really challenged in GT. There are no moments that really affect his character at all, in fact, he's pretty much the same character from start to end. He doesn't change at all, actually. The only thing character-wise to talk about is that when Goku did his child form, he's very childish and more, he, he relaxed it more and holds back and, like, plays around more during a fight. In his Super Saiyan 4 form, Goku's like, This is business, I'm going to kick your ass. And, like, he goes in and destroys his opponent for the kill. He goes in for the kill. And that's really the last time you really see anything with the character in that arc. Everything else is kind of just the same as it is at the end of the day. So the only other thing about the character wise to talk about at the end in, in GT is the ending. Where Goku ultimately sacrifices himself for the greater good and pretty much does what he did at the Cell Games. He decides to if he leaves everybody alone, he disappears for like a hundred years, he loses everybody alone, and leads it up to the next generation to handle things, and we get to see that there are characters besides Goku that can protect the planet. 
And that is really kind of how it ends. And that's a good ending for the franchise and Goku character. But it did Dragon Ball GT, so nobody really cared if it's good or not, right? So, as was the point of this video, is Goku a consistent character? No, he is not. In Dragon Ball, Goku was fine with killing people. In Z, he seemed to have an issue doing it, but then he was fine with straight up murdering Yakon, or Yakon, or whatever the hell his name is. And just, Goku is in no way consistent. He'll have multiple character traits inside of him, that will contradict each other at the same time. And he's not a hero either, but it's not even about whether he's a hero or not. He's just not a consistent character. And guys, I hope you really have a better understanding of Goku's character, or at least understand how inconsistent of a character he is after watching this video. Tell me down below if you actually watched the, the entire video, and tell me your thoughts on Goku's character in the comment section down below. Please like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more videos, and I'm sorry it was so long. I really, I tried to avoid making it this long, but just, I covered Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, and Dragon Ball GT. So, of course, this is going to be a long video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation, signing out. Have a great day, guys.